interest rates on bonds, interest rates and bonds are the value of the bond. They actually work in reverse. So if you think of a teeter-totter on a playground, uh, if on one side of the teeter-totter is the value of the bond, on the other side is actually the yield on the bond. And so as the yield goes up, the price of the bond goes down. Well, conversely, if the yield is going down, the price of the bond is going up. In a rising interest rate environment, bonds are going to get killed. Yeah, so interest rates have been low for so long. So that you're saying that if, if someone owns a bond, maybe even unknowingly in any of these funds or any mutual funds they have, if they own these bonds and then new, new rates come out and, and rates go up, then the new bonds that are being sold will have a higher payout or higher maybe yield on that. Your value of your older bonds go down because the, who wants the old rate? You want the newer rate that's higher. So it's actually working against uh, what the maybe the intent is with these target funds. A new couple sitting in my office uh, yesterday or in a conference room yesterday. And, um, you know, they, they were talking about how their brokerage account at another firm just goes up and just goes down and has these wild swings and they just can't take it anymore. And that's, that's prevalent among people who are nearing retirement or especially in retirement. Who wants to take money to supplement your income who wants to take money at the low? I just had a gentleman last week that had said, you know, he'd read some articles online saying that if you just put your money in a stock index fund, you should be able to pull, you know, in some cases somewhere between 7 to 10% out in a given year, or at least that's the expected average rate of return uh, out, of a, out of a normal stock index fund. And what I walked him through was if we used a, a simple index like the S&P 500, that depending on the period of time that you're living through, those averages can be thrown way out of whack, especially if you look at the, the early decades of the century that we're in, or the early decade this uh, century, year 2000 through the year 2009 and 2010, you would have netted close to zero return. Now, if you're counting on these long-term 40 to 50 year averages of 10% or more that the stock market can provide, you're really resting, as Larry said, on, on a major roller coaster that is unpredictable. We don't know how these rising interest rates and economic changes are going to be impacting the stock market for the next five to 10 years. And what we're looking to build through our consultation process is a much more predictable outcome for income for every household that we talk to. As people layer on more things, uh, give us some examples of what that might cost. Sure. So a, a basic return, you know, you got W-2s, maybe you're retired, you've got 1099s from both retirement accounts, pension, social security. That, that's a pretty simple return. And so, for example, we would price that just out at, at a flat rate. Whereas if you go to other firms, they might price it based on the hours it takes to complete your return, both actually putting the information in the return, any contact you need with the preparer, whether it's you sit down and have a conversation when you drop it off, sit down and have a conversation about the results when you're done, you're billed, you know, by the minute pretty much for everything start to finish. So what are some important items to consider when getting ready to file your taxes this year? Well, one of the most important things, of course, is making sure you've got all the appropriate documents together. And that's going to be from a variety of different things. Now, let's skip the normal new things this year. Uh, let's talk about the stuff that's going to be new. Um, last year was a big year. Lots of people investing into crypto of whatever flavor. And um, the IRS doesn't have a lot of rules out there on how that's all going to be treated. So it's on you as the individual investor to make sure that you're gathering the appropriate documents together to reflect how that income needs to be reported in your taxes. The idea is that there are certain things that or events that will happen in your life that will dictate whether you should have a state plan or not. Clearly, if you have nothing of value to pass, maybe there may not be necessary to have a will, but powers of attorney for finance and health could be very important if something were to happen to you so that your parents, your siblings, whomever can intercede for you uh, in a case you're incapacitated. Okay, so people need to know that when, when we're helping you enroll in Social Security and Medicare, we, we, when we do that, that is all done at the same website. And then as, as you're explaining this, then we need to know, are we turning both of them on at the same time? Are we turning on one at a time? In this case with Medicare, you really have to, you really have to time that in this situation just right. Because if you 
apply for Medicare Part B too soon, they oftentimes will activate it right then and there, and then you're paying that month $170 a month for something that you can't use or not going to use because you have group insurance. And so you do have to time that just right. So you, so in essence, so you, you enroll in one, and then you come back later, in this case at a later date, to enroll in Part B. But being that he's 65, he's eligible for Medicare, but he's staying on group insurance. Mm-hmm. 